I'm gonna do, I'm gonna start up here and I'm going to skin down the back side of the leg here. Technically, it is his dad's because it's dad's bottom. So technically, it's not even his truck. It's his dad's truck. One, two, three. There you go. That's why we leave this leg on right there. You know, you really start pulling on it and not have to cut too much. But you'll get to the t you'll get to some points where you start tearing the meat. That's something that people do. For uh, for guide. Yeah. Yep. And then, um, his guy liked him so much. He reminded me so much of his son that passed. That he was like, go on a job, you come back out in two more months again. Yeah. Try to get a cheap job, and he's been out there for a year and a half. Yep, that sounds pretty awesome. Yeah, I know. Man, come on. It's a school he is. I don't watch. Is that wrong with you? Is that bad for Chuck? Go ahead and pull it more. Oh, that's good. You can kind of just hold it like that for a second. It gives me just a little bit of tension that I need. I'm going to get her on the other side there. Almost there. So, how many bones do you need to? How many bones do you need to detach to get this mother shoulder off? What's that? None. None. Yes, that's correct. So a shoulder blade is held on just by the muscle. Just by the muscle. Yes. I'm right in between a couple of muscles right here. If I get it right, I'm not really cutting through any big muscle group. The best part of the deer. The tenderloins are good as well. Uh, but the tenderloins are small. There's not, you know, it's uh, on a deer like this for, you know, a family like mine. Tenderloin is barely a meal. I'm gonna go right down the side of the of the backbone, and I can really kind of do this in one long cut. All right, so I think someone has to hold that leg right there. Just hold it so it doesn't move. Yeah, that'll be best. You guys can see this. I don't know. If we have a, a joint right there, a little uh, ball joint where the hip socket goes in. And so we just need to cut right around that. You can see that little socket right there. So you're going to cut right down to that bone piece right there. And it's going to wiggle a little bit. Yep. Right? Yeah, right there. So now we're not attached with my bone anymore. And then the last bow, we'll just go again, find that socket in there. I'll be cold, just put them on our stove and get them out. All right. Again, just kind of, this is going to drop. If somebody, if we can get one more person on this. The whole uh, carcass. Whole carcass, carcass. yep. Yeah. yeah, the whole carcass is going to drop. I got you. All right, don't worry. 
We've got a, a manimal over here. That's part man, part animal. All beast. It's not that heavy. It's like, yeah, no, it's not heavy at all. Hey, you think I'll be a good fit for Road Witcher? <laughs> What's that? Hey, I'll be a good fit for Road Witcher. Yeah, there you go. Oh, yeah. All right, so this is basically, you know, this is the, um, this is the full body, this is the most of the body right here of the carcass. First what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove the excess meat from the outside of the ribs. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut off the neck roast. What I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna cut out the esophagus. All right, so what we have right here is we have the hind quarter of the deer on a pig. This would be called the ham. This is going to be where the, meat, the most poundage of our meat is going to come from. So the first thing that I'm going to do with this, is I'm just going to kind of use my dry towel right here, or dry-ish, and I will make sure that I get off any junk. So what we're going to do now is we're going to bone it out. So we're just gonna ride right down that bone right there. This right here is where you're gonna get a lot of good uh, roasts and steaks from. If you wanna roast out of that, you can certainly do that. If you wanna get steaks out of this, you can get steaks out of this. Um, and you can also make some really good jerky out of this as well. When people are first starting to learn how to fabricate or do any butchering, one thing that I really suggest is that you use your hands a lot in the beginning. If you use your hands, you can really find out where all these seams are and where it wants to come apart. And all this connective tissue in here, if that ends up in the, in the uh, final steak and it's not stewed or anything, that connective tissue is actually gonna be one of, the, that's gonna be the chewy part. So while the meat itself can be chewy, it's the connective tissue that um, is really gonna give you that uh, sense that the meat is really chewy. And I'm gonna, right now I have that chance, I'm gonna go right here, I'm gonna start peeling off a little of that silver skin right there. Get underneath, angle it up, and pull it away. So underneath, angle it up. Underneath, angle your blade up. My blade's a little sharp, so it's kinda cutting right through it now. So, I think it's important when you're uh, butchering a deer or any animal um, that you really try to take care of a lot of the trimming right then and there. You don't want to have to take care of too much of that when you open the package up. And again, again um, a uh, deer steak, a venison steak that's not trimmed well um, could really turn people off to eating it in the first place. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this right down the center and I'm gonna turn my blade right there and then I'll trim off a lot of that fat just by turning my blade going along the board right there. So I have that fat that's remaining. I'll turn this around now and I'm gonna come back through. We'll get some steaks out of this. We'll get some leg steaks out of this. And this right here, we'll cut it into some stew. I like my stew cuts to be at least an inch thick. grind on this right here. And we'll go 
going to stew on this piece right here. All right, so this right here uh, is the back strap. Um, this is where we had a little bit of damage right in here, so I'll make sure to keep that, I'll make sure to cut some of that out right there, but only as little as possible. So the back strap is gonna have the back fat on top of it. What I like to do is I like to flip it right over, like this. I like to rub my hand right underneath it. All right, so what I'm gonna do now, my knife in there, I'm gonna angle it up slightly. I'm gonna try to make nice long pieces of silver skin coming off. So again, this is like one of the best cuts of meat on the animal right here. So what you don't want to do is is keep it um, keep the silver skin on and have people eat, have it eat like one of the worst cuts of meat. So I really want to make sure I get the silver off of here. I think it's probably one of the most important places to get all the silver off. That right there, you know, for a piece of wild game, that's actually reasonably well marbled. I mean, not a whole lot of fat in there, but it's more than you usually get. So um, we had a good year this year with mast, both soft mast and hard mast. Um, the soft mast being apples and such, and then the hard mast uh, being acorns and beech nuts and hazelnuts and all that. So these deer have been eating really, really well. So this is gonna be about one of the better years um, for eating wild game. This is what I'm getting out of um, out of the, the loin. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 14, 14 excellent medallions and one roast. Here, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over a couple of our um, tools that we use. You don't need to have all these tools at home. Um, really just one guard, good sharp knife and you can do just about everything. Um, but I'd say the most important thing that I have right here is a bony knife. Got a nice thin blade, a small so you, are, you can articulate around the joints and get underneath silver skin. I really like having one of these. Um, I have a chef's knife right here. It's good for like a lot of uh, all-purpose utility cuts. Um, this is, if I had one knife in my uh, arsenal, I'd probably have this knife right here. I've got a small slicing knife. I can make some nice long strokes and slices with this. It'll do the same uh, as a lot of the, uh, the chef knife does. Um, and then I have a small cleaver right here, and this can help for some, uh, some joints that are almost there. I can give it a little whack and it'll be done with it. Um, I also have a bone saw right here. It's actually just a hacksaw. Um, I pretty much use it for a lot of my game processing. Um, yeah, um, the one thing with the saw is you wanna make sure that when you are cutting through a bone, that you make sure that you cut with the meat with the knife and then the saw. Um, you only cut the bone with. And then I like to have a quick, quick sharpening tool around um, just in case my knife starts losing its edge. All right, so here's the hind quarter. And what I'm gonna do th first thing is I'm actually on this one, I'm gonna cut out a shank. And then I'm going to cut right around here. I'll cut up here. So I'll cut this bone right here, fold that almost all the way, and then I'll go back here and I'll cut this bone. This right here is a shank. Um, you go ahead and sear it all the way around and then just throw it in the crock pot or stew it um, for say three or four hours at like 275 degrees or until it's tender. Now I'll continue to bone this out. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my, in there with my hands a little bit and I like to see what I can do with my hands first then I know exactly where I need to cut. Got one major muscle section right there. What I'll do is I'll just kind of cruise through this. Um, for grind, it doesn't need to be too, too small. Um, sometimes people will cut like little cubes for grind. And then sometimes people will cut strips. I like doing strips because once you start feeding it into the grinder, then it'll just kind of suck it the rest of the way in. This right here, I'm gonna go all into grind for venison burger and sausage. We'll be making breakfast sausage and Italian sausage out of this animal. 
And once we get down towards the, the leg right here, down towards the shank, this is where all the silver skin really turns into tendons. And we'll try to remove some of those. Even though we're going to grind it, we'll get in there and we'll start removing. So one of my techniques I do is I get my knife in there and I pull back on my knife as I get in there. And then we'll find a lot of that real tough sinewy meat. So that move where I was slicing back and forth but sliding down the silver skin can expose all that silver skin. And once I have it exposed like that, I can flip it upside down and kind of do the same thing on the other side. Even though I'm going to grind that, it's good to remove a lot of that silver if you can. Well, anybody trying this for the first time, um, it really doesn't matter. Some of this, if you screw it up just a little bit, it'll still be completely edible. And just the experience of cutting up your own deer or a deer for a friend is pretty amazing, I think. This right here is um, that's part of the area of question that we question. So kind of my general rule of thumb is we have that dark meat and we have the, co the coagulated blood in there. That's generally what I'm going to end up cutting out. Is that where the bullet has been directed? Well, um, it may not have entered or exited right through there. Um, but that's definitely part of the wound yeah. channel right there. So uh, your chances of getting, uh, uh, say, bone fragments in there and uh, metallic fragments from the uh, projectile in there are much higher. So I generally will discard a good chunk of that. So again, that's why you really want to pay attention to where you're shooting. This right here that came off of the uh, exterior of the ribs from the back, and this is our flank steak right here. You get a small deer, there's not really a whole lot there. I ended up just putting that all in. Something like this. I might uh, leave. I may have one or two of these pieces in there that I'll save for a flank steak. And again, some of our um, wound channel right here. And I'll just kind of clean that up a little bit. And then here, I'm just going to find a few more pieces to grind in here. But again, I'll be kind of like really trying to cut off as much of that fat as possible without getting rid of all the meat. So that's a good piece to grind right there as well. All right, so here we have the, the front legs right here. There's not a whole lot of really good cuts on the front legs. The front legs tend to be a little bit tougher than the hind legs, and there's not as much meat on them. All right, so good chunk of fat right there. Again, we know this animal is eating well because of the, that large chunk of fat right there. So the first thing I'm gonna do with that is I'm just gonna cut that right off. Shoulder blade right here. One of the challenging parts about the shoulder blade is you can't just cut the meat right off the top because you have this bone sticking up right here. So we'll just kind of like cut around that. Again, just like the hind leg, just gonna find where the bone is and just gonna go right down it. So cut that off right there. It's quite a bit more tough. Most of the cuts are more tough than the uh, back end. So what we'll end up doing is we'll go in a stew in the ground on most of this.
I, you know what? I'm noticing I'm putting a little too much effort into cutting. So having one of these handy little knife sharpeners, we'll see. We'll see how that did. All right. So here we go. Again, a little bit more part. A little part. And again, uh, a little bit more of the um, the blood clots and the coagulated protein. That's all blood right there. Um, so what we'll do is we're just going to go ahead and we're going to. First thing we're gonna get in there, we're gonna trim off what we're not gonna keep. Um, the top of the shoulder blade will be like this. There's a piece of bone that sticks straight up on that. So what you're gonna do, you want, what you're gonna wanna do first is find where that comes in. And then if you have a flexible bony knife, you're just gonna run right down the side of it. So kind of scoop it right off, that right there on one side. Cut the rest of this out for the ground. Right around the bones and the knuckles, you always find like the, um, some tendons and some fat in there. And you can usually grab most of the wad and kind of just pull it out in one cut. One thing you can certainly think about when you're cutting up an animal is to let gravity do a lot of the work. So I'm just kind of like holding it like this. And where it wants to separate, it will separate. So, you guys from all different schools or all the same schools? All right. So, can I go through real quick? So, I have the tendons I'm going to do. I'll tell you about the program. We'll get started with the fun stuff. So, I got it.
How am I doing, Howard? Awesome. Oh, man. <laughs> 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 How'd I do, Morgan? <laughs> 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 